Hey everyone and welcome to another episode. I was thinking this week we could have ourselves a little challenge. So what I'm thinking is I want to brainstorm with you guys about a little problem I have with my game and uh, I'd like to get your suggestions, comments and potential solution in the comment section below of this video. I think I might have cornered myself a little bit when I designed my game Solar Rogue. I made it at the beginning as a totally tile based system. So one sprite, one tile, one object. And that's really nice and fine, but it's a space game and you know, space is really big and it's kind of awesome to have stuff that show a little bit their scale, but I'm not quite sure how to do this in my game. For the longest time I've dreamt of having object that maybe takes like 2x2 two two tiles or 3x3 three three tiles or even something irregular like a, a spaceship that's like one tile thick but like three tiles long or something. But I just don't know how to do it with my current system. To understand more about the problem you have to understand a little bit how the code is structured. So I have this behavior called the level loader and the level loader has an array of all the tiles in the game and this array contains a unique reference to every object in the game. What that means is that whenever I move or act or shoot or want to know the position of something, I just take the tile, ask the level loader what's on that tile and the level loader can instantly return me the list of everything on that tile, which makes it really powerful, really easy to use and really versatile. The only little trick with this is that if something is moving, I have to 100% make sure that I update its position reference inside the tile array. But that's fairly simple and easy to do. There's also a little something with the level generation. When I'm generating my level, I don't want objects to overlap each other. So the way I do this is that I iterate over all the tiles in my level and I decide for each tile if I want to spawn something here or not. You know, I could generate the coordinate randomly, but if I do that, I might end up with the same coordinate multiple times. So doing it by iterating over the tiles means that I'm sure that there's never something that overlaps each other. But if I have multi-tile object, then it's a bit of a problem. For example, right now my son's sprite is 3x3, three three, which makes it look awesome, but the game only thinks it's occupying the center tile, which means that it's not gonna mind putting planets or wormhole or ships on top of the other parts of the sun, which kind of sucks. Here's a couple of questions. How do I keep my tile array clean in my level loader without huge overhead? How do I fix my level generation to make sure that I still don't get any overlaps? And also, bonus question, how do I format my JSON data to specify that an object has multiple tiles? Do I have a width, a height attribute? Do I have a list of tiles that are occupied by the object? Do I have like an offset or an origin? I'm not quite sure yet. Okay, so this is the basic premise of the whole thing. So if you want, you could pause the video here and think of your own ideas and solutions if you don't want any spoiler. Because from here, I'm going to discuss a couple of solutions and ideas I've had myself. And you're more than welcome to post a couple of comments about your ideas, or even if you want, just write them down and wait till the end of the video to see if I've come up with your solution and if you've already planned for all the pot potential issues that this solution have, because I haven't found a solution that doesn't have any issues. So let's start with the most extreme solution of them all, just removing tiles entirely. I mean, there's no real reason to have tiles, I guess. I mean, the objects could just move freely into space and I could just use collision box to know if I'm targeting something or not. Um, this has a couple of issues, of course. Uh, most of it is like, I don't know how it would keep that and keep something turn-based. I mean, look at most tactical turn-based games. They all have one unit, one tile, and they all use a tile system. Just because for a turn-based game, it seems like it's kind of essential to have a tile system. So maybe that's not a really good idea. Besides removing tiles entirely and making it into like a, a real-time game would be such a huge project that it would be worth it to just scrap everything and start over from beginning. So I'm not going to do that. My original idea was that I should allow multiple reference to the same object inside my tile array. So an object could be at both 
1111 and 1011 at the same time. This has a couple of issues, but maybe nothing that you can't bypass somehow. The first issue is that if the object is moving, I need to update all the reference. So instead of updating just one position, I have to update multiple position. That's not so bad if I have a two by two object and that means I have only four reference to update, but what if I have like a 20 by 20 object and I have to update 400 reference every time this object moves, which seems a little bit like a big overhead for a game. But maybe that's the price to pay for it, I don't know. Then the other thing I have to be careful is that anything that has area of effect, like an explosion, then I have to be careful not to apply it multiple times every time I hit the object in my array. And this might not be such a huge problem either by just making sure that whenever I fetch the tiles for an area of effect, I fetch everything first and then apply the damage after making sure that every reference is unique inside the list of things that will be influenced. Also a little bit more subtle is if it's purely the same reference in every tile, then there's no way to really know what's the origin of my object. So when I get an object, for example, from the top left corner of the tile, how do I know I'm in the top left corner? When the object is moving, I need to update the other reference, but do I need to go down and right or do I need to go up and left? I have no way of knowing because it's all the same object and I don't know which tile is the origin and I don't know how big my object is. So that's a little bit more concerning. When I delete an object or when I move an object, I need an easy way to get all the reference of that object. I can't just go through all the tile in my scene to make sure I update everything because that would mean going through like 80 by 80 tiles times the number of object in that tile, which is like O of N cube, which is completely ridiculous. One of the solution to that that I've seen discussed somewhere is that you should use dummy objects. So these objects are basically reference to the real object. So you, your object has like an origin. For example, my son, the main object would be the center. And then I would have dummy object referencing the middle tile. This dummy object, since it's not the main object, would allow you to keep separate information for each of the multi-tile objects. It kind of solves the issue of the solution I mentioned before, but it creates another level of indirection. Whenever I get some tile object, I need to check if it's a reference to another object and then fetch this other object, which becomes really complicated and really tedious. And I really don't like this solution at all. But you could even push this idea even further because the, I could actually take my sun, for example, that's three by three and split it into separate object and then maybe have a component that tells the game how each of those objects are related to each other. And then I would have a behavior that would manage all the tile interaction. And that would mean having multiple JSON, one JSON for each part of a multi-tile object. And honestly, it doesn't solve that much more issues and it makes some stuff just oh so scary to imagine like imagine trying to animate that i would need like separate animation for each part and they would need to be perfectly in sync otherwise you would see seams at each corner of the tile and oh my god it would be so scary no no no, no. forget about it not only that but it would create so many json imagine the sun being three by three would need nine json and then like if you have a 10 by 10 object, I need a hundred JSON to describe this object. No thank you. So all in all, I feel that the best solution is probably to just put multiple reference of the same object inside my tile array. And the issue of knowing which tile this object reference has is can probably be handled by just putting this information inside the object attributes. It would mean something more to update whenever the object moves. I need to not only update the tile array, but I have to update like the array of tiles inside the object itself, which is like kind of weird because it's a tile of tile of inside the tile. But anyway, it's all right, I think. And then there's only a couple of edge cases like the area of effects or the level generation that I need to tweak a little bit to take this system into account. 
I think it's probably the best solution, but I still think it's not really clean or really easy to use. But maybe that's just how it is. I mean, any solution will probably just be a hack. If you have any better solution, I'm really happy to hear about it. But it just reminds me a little bit of uh, state machines. State machines look awesome. Whenever people get into programming first, they're just all about state machines. So easy, transition and states and everything works well and it's efficient and it's really nice. All until the day you need to be into multiple states at once. And then it just becomes a big ugly hack. So I feel tile systems are like that. It works if you have only one object, one tile, but as soon as you want to add objects that take multiple tiles, then you fall into the hackish kind of systems. So what do you all think? Do you think it's a good idea? Do you think I could do something even better? Do you have other explanation? And what about this idea of having it as a kind of challenge to the people watching me? Do you think it's fun or stupid? Or like, did I explain myself properly? I realized that, you know, this is my first time trying this idea, so maybe the formula isn't quite right and maybe I'll need a few more practice run before I can get it right. But honestly, this idea has me a little bit excited. And uh, that's gonna be it for this week. Don't forget to leave a comment and please, if you have a few spare seconds, hit the like button and if you haven't yet, try to subscribe because I think it really helps the YouTube algorithm and if the channel grows, then these little challenge might get more exciting and more interesting with more comments in it. And until next week, see you guys in my next episode.